Are you wanting to create a highly prosperous photography business doing what you love? Or maybe you have a great business already and want to up your game? Then you're in the right place. Master craftsman photographer Lucy Dumas and her guests are here to support you on your journey. Now here's your hostess and tour guide, Lucy. You want to be a part of something like that. That's something bigger than yourself. That's something you leave a legacy of being a part of something special. And that's a quote by Saquon Barkley. I don't know who that is. I think he's an athlete. Um, and I'm super excited about today's solo episode. I'm working on some titles. So just a little hint. One is the enduring value of portraits across human history. Another is proudly contributing to the rich tapestry of human stories. <laughs> so I'll tell you what that's about in just a minute. But before I do that, I want to encourage you to go to lucydumascoaching.com. Lucy with an I. Um, there's a couple of free gifts. There's an ebook and another like a mini, mini book about marketing. And if you would like to chat about anything, if you want a price list or website review, just let me know and we can set up a 20 minute call uh, anytime. I mean, it's not going to be anytime, not the middle of the night, but I'm here for you. Okay. So here's my story. I was in Indiana for a family wedding. Now, the fun little side thing is I wasn't the photographer, but the photographer was fine letting me help and letting me take pictures that I wanted. So I had all the fun of a wedding photographer with none of the stress. You can go to my Facebook page, Lucy Dumas, Lucy with an I, and you can see some of those recent photographs from this cousin's wedding. Anyway, I digress. So in wondering what could I do in Indiana besides drive through hill and dale and woods and and uh, different things and I realized there was a lovely museum in Indianapolis and so I planned a couple days in the city and spent a really nice day in this museum it also has beautiful grounds and kind of a mansion and gardens so it's a wonderful um outing and I walked into this room and first of all here was the sign on the wall of what was in this room what was it about title is portraiture and identity portraiture is among the most universal and accessible accessible of art genres Tapping into such fundamental human characteristics as our need for self-expression, our curiosity, vanity, and the desire to be remembered. The portraits in this gallery are mostly Western in origin. And when you first walked in, it was set up like a living room. And over the fireplace was a, a, it was a video uh, screen, but it had a photograph where a group of people, I think there were about five, were posed in the Dutch masters um, style. And if you don't know what that is, you might want to Google it. Like some were looking to the right, some were looking wistfully up, but somebody was maybe looking at someone else. But they were dressed in contemporary, uh, simple clothing with a very simple classic background. So it told that that story of of something from the past and now and how they're connected. Um, so it says that these portraits span several centuries with different mediums. And um, some were self-portraits. And anyway, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But I stood there and I burst into tears. Why? The reason is I never quite thought before about how I have spent my life as a portrait artist doing what 
has been done by humans, by artists, since the history of humanity. Since goat uh, blood paintings in caves, I imagine, or things drawn in in charcoal from from uh, cooking fires. And I, I just was so moved thinking about um, the decision I made and the decision many of you have made that are listening to spend our time, energy, money, heart, creativity, passion, personality, uh, friendliness, imagination, effort, effort, effort to photograph people in a way that has value to them and or to others. So this episode is honoring all of us who we have chosen this as a profession. And, you know, to me, it's as valuable as doctors and teachers and, you know, I can go down the list. But if you think about some of the things that actually have the most monetary value right now are paintings and sculptures and masks and other things of people. Think about if you could and would buy the Mona Lisa, simple portrait of a beautiful Italian woman with a hills in the background. How many millions of dollars is that worth? So um, anyway, it, it just got me excited thinking about uh, that this could be a good episode for the portrait, the profitable photographer with Lucy Dumas. All right. Um, and just some of the feelings that I felt when I was pondering all of this, first of all, you may have heard this in my voice right now, is pride. I'm just so proud to have spent so much of my life contributing to this art um, and contributing to the people who I created portraits for. Humble. When I think about that I am a part of a tradition where some of the most brilliant people that have ever lived, like I'm going to say Da Vinci, Michelangelo, among, you know, thousands and thousands of others. I'm a part of that. And that's very humbling. And if you're doing portraits, you're a part of that. And so grateful because the life I've created in, in uh, being committed to this has been absolutely wonderful. And now as a podcaster and as a coach, I get to help others create those legacies for the people that they work for, um, create art, satisfy their own itch, their own dreams, their own, their own needs. So it is something I'm just extremely grateful for. All right. So I'm going to tell you a little secret. In this last month, all I've ever all I've heard about, not ever heard about, but heard about is chat GPT, chat GPT. People said, chat GPT. Like, what is that? Chat GPT. So I decided, so in case you haven't heard of it, you're one of the five people left uh, that haven't. It's an uh, artificial intelligence where we can uh, ask the the chat to write something for us and we tell them what we want and then it somehow finds the most amazing things in a matter of seconds. So I did some searching, first of all, on some titles. That's why I have a few for this episode and then some other questions. And one was uh, why we should be proud to be portrait photographers and artists. Now, I'm not just going to read you what uh, came up, you know, and just sit there and read it all. So I'm going to summarize some and throw in my own ideas. So first of all, we're capturing the essence of people. We have a power to freeze a moment 
and give it back to the world. Our art allows us to create memories and tell captivating stories using faces and the expressions and the design and everything that we use in our portraits. Number two, we're empowering others. When people have the experience of being photographed by us, when they see the results, when kids see photographs of themselves, either individually or with their families, it is empowering. We feel more important. Um, in the history of humanity, so many of the portraits that we still treasure um, are of people that were historic figures. Now with photography, everybody gets to be a historic figure in their lives. Um, it builds connections. Now we get to have connections with our subjects and then people get to connect like here is someone in my family and the well two someones and I feel connected to them every day even though that little person is a much bigger person now I get that connection and of course it's our ability to preserve let's say that better our ability to preserve legacies they become treasured heirlooms i've said that over and over again in my last 200 plus episodes it stands the test of time how many photographs do you have from people in your past that you can still feel like they're present and um like my mother's parents had wedding portraits done professionally and it's still looks fairly contemporary the lighting was good the background we're still using similar backgrounds so standing the test of time it's also creatively inspiring um, for me when I'm working I like to do what I know people are going to love and then push myself to think of other things one of the reasons I had to quit weddings is because I kept pushing more creativity, more ideas, more things, and it got on my list and I was exhausting myself and probably my um, brides and grooms and families. And a lot of my best work um, would end up just as a five by five in an album because the actual portrait portraits are um, things people always wanted to fill their books up with. So I found that when I switched to babies and kids and families, those ended up as art in people's homes. Um, another uh, beautiful value in portraiture is the diversity of humans and our beauty. And, you know, we're all unique. Yes, we probably all look like somebody, whether we know it or not, we resemble somebody in our family, um, but we are still one of a kind. And um, so there's that. So I want to tell you a couple of stories around this topic. Uh, one is about a moment when I realized what I was doing was so important in the world. So here I am, my 30s, becoming a photographer, you know, became a photographer with a, a nice camera in my 20s. But I'm photographing people for money. And there's a part of me thinking, oh, real photographers are like National Geographic and fashion and, uh, you know, other commercial kinds of work, food photography portraiture weddings it's you know it's sort of like the stepchild of creative artistic photography which is not true but that's what I felt at the time so I went to a, a three-day conference and I was waiting for a panel that was going to be discussing photography as art and I started chatting with a woman who had been in business for 20 years just like me and she said, well, I started out doing portraits and then I took a commercial job and then another one and another one. And I looked up and I just spent the last 20 years 
photographing commercially. And most of my work is in landfills. And I feel, this is what she said, I feel like I wasted my life and my talents. And if I had stayed doing portraits, my work would be treasured for, you know, countless eons. And that moment I realized, oh, what I've been doing is very important and very honorable. And I'm grateful because of my own personal values, my own personal connection to families, um, my absolute love of just having a person in front of me and the opportunity to like find out who they are through my lens and then click that shutter and have that shine through. Now, at this point in my life, I realize, especially as I've been coaching some people who do commercial work, um, that even if it ends up in, I, I guess it wouldn't be so much landfills now because there's not that much printed in magazines. But when we, let's say, photograph an executive portrait or food or a product or whatever we might do commercially, uh, fashion, we're contributing to the lives of the photographers and the subjects. We're helping grow businesses. You know, there's infinite levels of, of um, positive reasons why that kind of photography is also, um, you know, I value it more now. But my point is, I had this realization at that point that photographers who photograph people are not less impressive or less special. Okay, um, here's another story. Uh, and it's about, um, let's see, which one should I tell you? Okay, well, this is current. So, and the, the moral of this story, I'll tell you in advance, is how wonderful it is to be uh, around for a long time. So you get to meet some of the people that you photographed, especially when they were children, and what those meant to them and what it meant to their families. So there used to be a little coffee shop in my neighborhood. I live in a super cute historic neighborhood just up from downtown San Diego. And by the way, up above my garage, I have a really cute vacation rental. Used to be my studio, and now it's a charming VRBO um, I call mid-century modern with a French accent. Uh, but it used to be my studio. I was at this coffee shop, and this woman on the patio had the most beautiful baby I think I'd ever seen. But she was two weeks old, and I love babies. And we got to know each other, and I got to hold her. And I don't usually offer to photograph uh, children for free. At least I didn't back then because I was busy. But I just I just had to get that child in front of my camera. And I created some portraits that I've I still will show those. It she might, her name, the baby is Montana Rose. She might be still on my website. Definitely still have portrait here in my studio. Um, so I've enjoyed that over the years. And she and I um did a did a bit of a trade for what she does for some portraits, and she has wall portraits in her home of Montana. So we became friends and we've stayed in touch and thank goodness for Facebook because I got to see Montana Rose show her new little daughter and follow the progress as she uh, grew and got stronger. And she and her mom and the baby were in town a couple of days ago and we got to have lunch together. And my friend said, she talks about me all the time and the portraits I took. And Montana, you know, just getting to hear how, um, what it meant in her life to have these portraits of herself. Like we we can't really measure if she didn't have it or she did. But I 
know that if I had had a photograph like I took of her when I was a baby, I would have known without a doubt, first of all, how beautiful I was. You know, we're all so, so gorgeous as humans and how loved I was. So anyway, there's that story. All right. What else do I want to share? Um, so throughout time, portraits and images of people have been highly valued, com commissioned, displayed, and as we know, some have become treasures. They document human history, human value from, I'm sure, cavemen times, but what, what we have that we've collected are things from ancient civilizations like Egypt and Greece and China uh, through medieval times in Europe and Africa and Americas. There have been representatives, representations of humans, aka portraits, throughout the ancient world and, and the medieval. And then, of course, the Renaissance in Europe was a huge expansion of paintings. And then the 18th, 19th century, there that was a really good time for beautiful portrait, portrait portraits. Um, these have been commissioned for personal use, for, uh, you know, when there's a king or uh, somebody important, for historical record. Um, I love to watch the historic dramas on PBS. Uh, one I watched recently was Queen Charlotte. And, oh, that's on Netflix. And I I researched and found out that, that she is based on a real person. And I'm sure they looked at portraits for and other art for the decor, the the costuming, the makeup, the way people stand, uh, all of it. Um, so that's the history. It expresses status for some people um, and it's beautiful. It can be gorgeous decor. I would gladly <laughs> hang uh, a, a Renoir painting of a young girl uh, holding a book that's an image that I just have always treasured. I've seen it a few times um, at museums. Um, so it's beautiful, even if we don't know the people. Um, now, in our time, we get to be this, the torch bearers to carry this legacy on. And because we get to use cameras, it makes it so much more accessible to everyone to be able to preserve the legacy and enjoy the beauty and help people with all those lists, um, feel good about themselves, uh, look at, you know, like fashion and different trends and so forth. So, um, you know, that's what I love about uh, our ability to capture something quickly. I was an artist at heart and always looking for a medium, I did a little painting. And for me as a person that's go, 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 it took too long. Um, so uh, when I got a good camera in my hand and and started photographing what I saw, it was just the whole world opened up to me. All right, um, let's see. I had a note I wanted to share why Portraits are important, but I think I've already done that. Um, I want to mention, first of all, I want to encourage you to study art, to go to museums, to go to galleries, to um, go to libraries and check out books that have portrait paintings um, throughout time and study those. Find some artists that you love and look at how they light, look at how they pose, uh, look at composition. Um, in Washington, D.C., I was surprised and thrilled that there is a, 
gallery, not sorry, a museum that I think is called the National Portrait Museum or Gallery that is just dedicated to portraiture. And spending a couple hours in there was really enlightening and uh, enjoyable. And there were photographs of Mick Jagger and there were paintings that go back millennia. There were so many, of course, um, political figures that have been important in American history. Uh, so expose yourself to art. <laughs> there, there's an old photograph that uh, I think there's the Mona Lisa on the wall and, and a, a man in a trench coat and you only see him from the back exposing himself. <laughs> and, Anyway, so when I say expose yourself to art, I always think of that. It was pretty funny. Anyway, so some of the artists that have influenced me, some of them I didn't even know I was being influenced by until later, are John Singer Sargent. Absolutely love his work. Um, he did paintings, I think mostly middle class people, but he photographed them luxuriously and the lighting and the poses are very simple um the skin tone uh the textures everything is just delicious i didn't realize until i went to a museum and saw more of his work oh i've always loved his work i just didn't know his name bougereau is someone i really really love marie cassatt does beautiful things of babies and children. Renoir loved the the skin textures and the shapes and like you can almost like you want to put your teeth in and you can feel that chewy <laughs> texture of of like baby's little skin and I don't know that may sound weird. I don't really bite children, <laughs> although it's they look delicious. But but anyway, no no no. <laughs> Okay, let me see. Is there anything else I want to share about this? Um, well, I'm just going to wrap this up. So overall, portraiture is important because it communicates and captures the essence of individuals, of societies, of historic periods. It provides a visual record of human experiences, emotions, and identities, and it fosters a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. And that was directly from a chat GPT um, prompt. So I'm going to give credit where credit is due. And um, yeah, so I'd love to hear uh, artists that you love. I'd love for you to post on Facebook or, or even message me. I did mention photographic artists, and there are a zillion, of course, that I love and have studied. Um, one, um, okay, Arnold Newman. So I got to spend a week with him, and uh, he, you know, it was, it was very fun, and he was very positive in his response to my work, which made me feel really great. Uh, he had a a museum show in San Diego. By the way, San Diego has an amazing photographic museum and fine art museum. So when you come to town and stay in my little bed and breakfast, if you can, uh, or Airbnb, um, you want to check those out. And, okay, there was a reason. Oh, so there was an Arnold Newman exhibit. And what I had not realized until I saw so much of his work. And I'm not sure if they put the art of the subject next to it, or I've just studied so much art that I know, you know, the style of Salvador Dali and Mondrian and, you know, many of the, the artists that were contemporary artists during Arnold Newman's time. He, he photographed a lot of celebrities and in that celebrity, he 
photographed a lot of creatives, musicians, uh, painters, sculptors, and he styled each of the images as if the artist was making it himself. So the one of Salvador Dali, uh, the surrealist, that photograph of him has things flying and is very surreal. And the Mondrian, Mondrian did color blocks and lines of things. And, and so Arnold designed the portrait of him to have geometry. Um, so uh, he's someone I really value. And, um, and there are so many people I've interviewed on this show that are fine, fine portrait photographers that I've really admired. So that is it for now. Um, just want to remind you, go to lucydumas.com and also find me on YouTube and it would mean the world if you would subscribe. I'm wanting more people to be able to enjoy uh, these shows that the, I'm turning into videos. Enjoy my guests, enjoy whatever bit of wisdom I might be sharing with you. And so when you subscribe, you help my show be found by more people. And I think you also get notifications of what's coming up. So blessings. I hope, you know, if you're listening to this as summer is approaching, you've got some really fun plans, or if you're down under that you've got sweaters and coats and skis and things that you can enjoy the winter down there at the same time we're enjoying summer and um that's it till next time bye you have been listening to the highly profitable photographer with lucy dumas if you've enjoyed this podcast please rate subscribe review and share to connect one-on-one -on -one and learn more about our coaching programs just go to lucydumascoaching.com until next time, go have fun photographing and selling your work.